Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert-free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's move on to exercise four of chapter nine. That's pages 82 to 83 of the grade five Discovering Music Theory workbook. And we're gonna have a look at the final exercise, exercise four on the chapter which covers music and context. And once again, we're referring to a little piece of piano music here, a nice little piece by Schubert. I love Schubert piano music. And um, we have some questions to answer, so we're gonna keep referring back to this, so let's press on. So our first question, as usual, is looking at some extracts in a different clef, and we're comparing it to the original, and this time we're asked to spot which ones are at exactly the same pitch. No octave changes, exactly the same pitch regardless of the change in clef. And we're looking at the left hand part of bar one. And so our big clue here is middle C. And we can see that we begin with the F below middle C and then we have C D, E and F, C and F, middle C is our reference point here. So we're looking for middle C. So we begin on the F below middle C and then we're looking for middle C and the F above that. So let's look at extract A. So here is middle C in the treble clef, C, B, A, G, F. There's middle C, <coughs> excuse me again, so that is exactly correct. Now here in the alto clef, that's middle C, and this is the C, B, A, G, F, and C, D, E, F above. So we have the F below, the F above, and there's middle C, and then we can see everything else follows suit. So that also is spot on. So let's now check this final one. So here we are in the tenor clef. So that's middle C. So there we have middle C, middle C. So that's correct. And then here we have C, B, A, G, F, which is the F that we need. And then here we have the C, D, E, F above that. So that's the same. And then that's the same again. And then we have middle C again with E natural, which is exactly the same though. That's the correct as well. So actually, yes, all three, A, B and C are all written correctly at the same pitch. Let's move on. So now we need to consider if these statements are true or false, referring back to the original piano piece. Is it true or is it false that the music should be repeated from the beginning? And so although there's no marks at the beginning, if we continue, here we have the repeat mark and these dots tell us to bounce back and they would tell us to either bounce back to corresponding dots and if there are no other corresponding dots to sort of revert to, that means we just go back to the beginning and that would be the case here. And so that is true. Is it true or is it false that the left hand should be played, always be played detached? And this is our clue. Staccato is detached and sempre means always. And so that is correct. We are always detached. Is it true that in bar four, the right hand of the piano part, so that's the top line in the treble clef, 
does it contain major sixth? So let's look at bar four. So we're discounting the, uh, uh, the Achachachura and let's see what we've got here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a sixth and it's A flat because of our key signature to F and that's entirely consistent. Conti we consider our lowest note as the tonic and A flat major would indeed have F naturals in it and that is exactly a major sixth and we get the same again here so that is true. Is it true or is it false that the right hand part contains a poggiatura? Now we've actually already discussed that because here we have achacaturas. Now here, because there are more than two, they don't really class as an apogiatura because an apogiatura would be just one note and then we would divide those equally. They are grace notes, it's just that there's one, not just one, there's two. An apogiatura would be one note that we divide equally between two notes. So uh, that's not true, that's false. A bit sneaky there, that one is. Is it true or is it false that the music is in the key of C minor? Well, let's think what C minor key signature should be. C minor is related to E flat major, which is B flats, E flats, and A flats. And here we have a key signature of four sharps, uh, sorry, four flats. <laughs> so that is incorrect, they are flats. And so we've got uh, one flat too many in the key signature, so that's incorrect. It's actually A flat major, which is, rela which is related to F minor, so we're in actually in F minor for there. And so that's false. And then let's continue over the page. Keep your piano part handy. So which instrument is best suited to play the right hand of bar one? So we're in the same octave, the same pitch. So the right hand is in the treble clef. It's not especially low. You know, we're not sort of delving down into lots of ledger lines. We need to be in the treble clef. So the bassoon would not be appropriate because that's a bass instrument. The oboe would be appropriate because that's a treble clef instrument. The cello is bass ordinarily and the tuba is bass so it would have to be oboe. Now then we're asked how many times does the subdominant note in the key of F minor appear in the left hand part? So throughout the left hand we need the subdominant of F minor. So let's think the subdominant is the fourth degree of the scale. One, two, three, four. And if we're in F minor, F, G, A, B. Of course it's a B flat because of the key signature, but your key signature will deal with that. And so we're looking in the left hand part for the note B flat. It can be any octave but let's see what we can find. So in the bass clef, that's F, C, F, they won't do. Just gotta keep scanning through. So there is a B flat. There also is a B flat. And that's the only time we see them. So we actually only get two. So that's that, it's just a matter of looking carefully, keeping your eyes peeled. And then finally, we're asked to find some accented notes. We can find some in bar two and then following on another bar. So let's look at bar two. So here is the accent. That's the sign for the accent. We see that in bar two and then we see it again in bar four. And if by any chance you've just had a little bit of a relapse and you've forgotten the accent sign, because they've told us it's in bar two, we've got a good clue what to look for later. Just use that to help. 
Now then bar three has the same rhythm and articulation, not necessarily the same pitch, just watch out there. Rhythm and articulation as bar one and so bar one has the same as bar three. So we've got that same articulation with the same rhythm. We've got the left hand quavers and then we've got this achacachora semi quavers, quavers. And it's the same rhythm as bar five and the same, we can see it's got the same articulation. We've got that slur with staccato. Okay, it's different pitch, but the rhythm and the articulation is the same, so bar five. And that's that exercise completed, and that's that chapter also completed. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert-free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.